All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast. BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Today we're still revisiting the case of Jean Benet Ramsey. It's been a while since I've talked about this particular case. I recently saw a documentary that had been made on YouTube, you know, like one of those kind of, I was about to say fan made, like, but we could say user generated upload, definitely not from a studio. It was made by somebody named. Sweetie B. This was a guy who's also written a book about John Benet Ramsey called Little Girl Blue. Blue is spelled B L U with no E. At first, I thought it wasn't a serious film, and it was just like, um, almost, you know, well, just not very, very genuine. Like, it wasn't taking the case seriously. The like dislike stuff was disabled, so I was like, oh, this is a prank or something, or it's a gag. But once I started listening a little more, I found out that. This guy actually has um, kind of um, a lot of primary sources involved, and he actually is presenting a genuine argumentative standpoint. Like he's actually in doing some investigation. He was just arranged in a very bizarre format. Once again, the name of his book is Little Girl Blue, B-L-U with no E, by Sweetie B, which is available on Smashwords. And I believe um, his YouTube username is just Jean Benet Ramsey. It was um, a rather rather, you know, well stacked with the research. And on this channel, most of the things I do aren't really like, you know, the deep dive things where I'm just rattling off absolutely every statistic of every kind. I definitely do more things like social commentary where I'm like, do these two ideas make sense? Does everything match up? But the interesting thing was this guy and me came to the same conclusions about Jean Benet Ramsey. So it's like we can say that there are a variety of opinions out there and a variety of methods that all come to the same standpoint. To tell you flat out, I don't believe that the Ramses are involved at all. My theories are all about how this was committed by an intruder and possibly up to three people. I mean, it could be more, but we'll discuss that in a second. Up to three intruders. And this is not only coming from some guy who made a user-generated YouTube video and me here on Black Box Radio, this is also coming from, you know, Detective Lou Smith, who also insisted upon the intruder theory. What are some things that are going on with this? Well, in this documentary made by the author of Little Girl Blue, they mentioned some very key details that um, I hadn't heard before. One of the largest things that is used to try and incriminate Patsy Ramsey is the paint tray that was found, you know, in the Ramsey home. Remember, the garrote that was tied around John Benet Ramsey's neck used cord from the Ramsey house, as well as Patsy's own paintbrush. And they said that, you know, this was made available to the public, that they found a red fiber in the paint tray, which they believed came from the exact clothing that Patsy was wearing. I believe this is um, um, a red jacket that she had on, the exact clothing that she was wearing when she had been, you know, visited by Detective Linda Arndt, and they were trying to discover the location of Jean Benet. The problem with that is, although they did find the red fiber, they found countless fibers of a variety of colors. And by countless, I don't actually mean, you know, a bazillion or something like that, but they found numerous fibers of of a variety of colors, as well as beaver fur, beaver fur. And they began, you know, looking through Patsy Ramsey's clothing, and they actually investigated. Does she own any beaver fur material? And she did not. She owned furs, but they were mink. So it's like, this is definitely, you know, something that is just showing you how the stuff that is revealed to the public can create this type of scandalous um, material, sensationalism. On In my personal belief, I would say that everything associated with incriminating the Ramsey's John... Patsy, and even Burke, is the result of sensationalism and, you know, scandalous aspects of the case. The other things that we would have to support this are the head of the paintbrush, you know, that actually contains the brush and the fibers, was not recovered from the crime scene, and Sweetie B believes that it was actually, that was actually the piece of of an item that was used to um, sexually assault John Bonet, he believes that someone actually put the paintbrush inside her, and that's what caused this evidence of, you know, um, sexual abuse. 
I believe that that is still somewhat up in the air because that paintbrush head with the brush and fibers has never been recovered. So that just must mean that somebody took it with them. Now, there's a very um, big thing that um, this person did in their book and film, and that's going a step further. I've talked about Michael Helgoth a lot on this channel, about how I believe that um, one of the intruders has been positively identified as Michael Helgoth. He identifies a second person whom he believes was in the house the night John Bonet murdered, and that was Linda Hoffman Pugh, who I believe, you know, I mean, is it really fair to call her the housekeeper? I mean, I believe she did work with the Ramses, and that Linda Hoffman Pugh had a financial dispute with the Ramses, and she was um, trying to get back at them. And there is a third person, because the touch DNA that was found on John Bonet's leggings and underwear did not come from Michael Helgoth, and it did not come from a woman, being Linda Hoffman Pugh. So, Linda Hoffman Pugh was, of course, married. Her husband's name was Mervyn Hoffman Pugh. Can I say with certainty that Mervyn Hoffman Pugh is the um, third person that was in the house that night? No, I can't, but, you know, possibility. What we can say is we have a boot print that was matched to Michael Helgoth found at the scene, and one of the reasons why we have that well-preserved boot print that has the letters H-I-T-E-C, high-tech, on it is... Jean Benet vomited during this uh, this ordeal. There's actually, you know, um, vomit that is found on her cheek, but also vomit that is found, you know, on the floor. And if I understand correctly, Michael Helgoth must have stepped in Jean Benet's vomit, and that's one of the reasons why we have the um, very well defined high tech boot print with the letters H I T E C stamped into the ground. Is that definitive certainty? You know, what What we can say is Michael Helgoth committed to his suicide. He committed suicide two months after this um, crime was made public. Once again, though, that means we would have three people in the house. There are numerous entry points for the Ramses, and they didn't have to walk through the snow, so they wouldn't leave any footprints behind. They could have entered through the window like Lou Smith suggests, or also Linda Hoffman Pugh would have had keys to the Ramsey household, and... She could have entered through numerous entry points, not to mention other doors were found unlocked. And, you know, one of the big things that was st stated about an intruder is they would have known the Ramsey schedule. Because one of the things that I, if I recall correctly, the Ramseys did have a dog for a while, but the dog was moved to someone else's home. So they, the intruder would have known that. Moreover, the intruder would have known that the Ramses weren't home, so they came in. And if I understand correctly, what was um, what happened in some of the intruder theories is the intruder came into the house, hid in the basement, and waited for hours before they went up to get Jean Benet. Whereas I had always thought that this was something like, you know, they entered in at like 12.01 in the morning, and then they went straight to Jean Benet's room, and then... They did their evil, and they went straight out. But actually, um, some things that have been put forward by a variety of sources online that look at the Jean Bonnet intruder theory are really suggesting that the intruders came into the house while the Ramses were out, when they knew the Ramses would have gone out. And um, this doesn't have to have any personal connection to the Ramses. All you have to do is just be a stalker and just watch the house and waiting for them to leave. But they would have known about um, the security system being down. They would have had a lot of information about the house. No signs of forced entry, mind you. Um, I believe that the broken window was attributed to something that John Ramsey had stated before. Like he said, um, he locked himself out once and he had caused the damage to the window. And it's most likely, though, and I do genuinely believe that Lou Smith is correct, that they placed a suitcase under the broken window so that they could um, escape outside that way like they you know people step on top of the suitcase and exit out into the night never to be seen again i've talked about the pineapple story a lot that um kind of incriminates burke ramsey on this and i just genuinely don't believe it um i've given a kind of a simpler explanation that i think burke was eating pineapple and milk by himself and he just left his um dishes there and then John Bonet came down later in the night she woke up and she did not sleep through the whole night and she just ate some pineapple out of his bowl with her bare hands and it was just left behind which you know 
I mean, that's kind of just a fact. It was just left behind. And I believe on the bowl there is Burke's fingerprints and Patsy's, but then there is um, only Burke's fingerprints on the glass of tea, which means that, you know, this is most likely something that he just prepared himself. Other things that we can talk about, the Patsy Ramsey murder theory really leans toward Patsy Ramsey getting angry over Jean Benet's bedwetting. And, you know, the argument put forward by Smiley B as an interpretation of evidence really suggests that that night the bed was not wet. Jean Benet did not wet the bed the night that she was, um, that she was murdered, that there was like, you know, actually no sort of urine that was found in her bed on the sheets, like that that is just an, an absolute um, piece of misinformation that has been distributed to the public. And I really, I really just began to feel that, um, that they're really zoning in on the Ramses because it's a way to sell tabloids. It's a way to sell, you know, the National Enquirer and the Globe. And I believe even the guy from the Globe is a character in Perfect Murder, Perfect Town, Lawrence Schiller and all that. And it's like, all right, I mean, it's definitely very scandalous. I mean, but what do we make of the ransom note then? Well, a lot of people were suggesting that the ransom note was written by a woman. And for the longest time, I didn't believe that. I really thought that, you know, there were two men in the house. One was Michael Helgoth and one was a giant question mark that the world has been trying to solve, you know, until the end of time. Like, who on earth was this other person in the house that probably committed, you know, the sexual assault and, um, well, choked John Bonet to death? Well, what we can say is, if Linda Hoffman Pugh was in the house with Michael Helgoth and perhaps another individual, then Linda Hoffman Pugh could be the author of the ransom note. I don't personally believe that Patsy Ramsey wrote the ransom note. Once again, when you compare the individual letters, letter by letter, it looks like her handwriting. But if you go word by word or sentence by sentence, I feel that the handwriting is completely different. And of course, John Ramsey is going to take her side, right? Of course. But... He actually has a point that the handwriting is written much more sloppily, if that is the word sloppily. It's much sloppier than Patsy Ramsey's handwriting. And other people have said that it does not show signs of panic. And if Patsy Ramsey had murdered her daughter, or if Burke had murdered Jean Benet, there probably would be a lot more distress in composing this ransom note. I've also suggested the possibility that somebody, you know, was, um, while someone was murdering and defiling Jean Benet Ramsey, someone was, you know, standing there waiting and writing the ransom note. They were just, you know, one person is committing the evil and another person is writing down the words on the paper. And it could mean that Linda Hoffman Pugh was the author of that ransom note. My original th theory on that was the ransom note was used as a diversion like it was just left at the um, foot of the stairs to kind of throw people off so they wouldn't find the body for a while. I guess I genuinely believed that this was a murder, that there never was any intention for um, any attention to get the money, any intention to get the ransom, that they knew that they were going to kill Jean Benet and they left the ransom note at the foot of the stairs to act as a diversion, to keep them waiting so they wouldn't discover the body for a, a, a certain amount of time and they would never get caught. It, that's just, you know, my personal theory on that. Is it 100% true? I don't quite know, just an interpretation because, you know, like, I wish I could be, be like, you know, a mind reader, psychic powers, telepathy, or something of that nature, but I'm just not quite there yet. Maybe I'll be working on it, studying at the Xavier Academy, hopefully in the future. But when it um, comes to the Ramses, I'm just not seeing the overwhelming pile of physical evidence that would, you know, lean toward any member of the Ramsey family. John, Patsy, Burke or any of the other family members, because we know that there was DNA found on Jean Benet that was from a male individual who is not connected to the Ramsey family. That is just, you know, a giant question mark. What we can sort of say, say now, and just to give a personal theory, there were three people in the house the night Jean Benet died, three intruders. 
that's right. They might have entered through a door, they might have entered through a window. Um, I don't really need to speculate too much on that. One of them was probably Michael Helgoth. One of them possibly could have been Linda Hoffman Pugh. And then there's a third individual who was involved with the molestation and sexual assault of Jean Benet. These three people committed the heinous act while Lyndon Hoff... I was about to say, well, Linda Hoffman Pugh wrote the ransom note, maybe her, maybe another female, and they, sh she left the note on the foot of the stairs, and then the three people go back to the basement. Something very, very disgusting happens to Jean Bonnet, and she is, of course, murdered from the garrote, actually. The strangulation killed her, and then these three people place the suitcase under the window, step up out into the night, and disappear leaving the absolutely worst antonym to a Christmas miracle that you could ever possibly imagine. Well, that's just my sort of feeling on this. Um, what do you think? What would you say is um, most likely the result of the Sean Benet Ramsey case after everything that I've put forward? And do you think there's any possibility that the Ramseys were involved? Because whenever I hear people talking about the intruder theory, I look at the comments sections on other videos and they're just like, no. It was Patsy. No, it was Burke. I'm just not seeing it, people. I'm just not seeing the physical evidence that is supporting that. We're talking about DNA. We're talking about boot prints. We're talking about handwriting that, you know, might not necessarily be Patsy's, which, not to mention, the Ramseys were exonerated because of the DNA evidence. Furthermore, um, I've talked to before about how I thought the um, staging the scene, like, you know, to go to this length to stage the scene, whether it was Patsy, John, Burke... That is just rather implausible. I mean, it's purely implausible for them to stage the scene with a garrote as opposed to just calling 911 and say, hey, my daughter fell off something and hit her head on something. I mean, like, that is sort of a much more plausible response. But in reality, we don't quite know yet 100%, only discussing some theories. And once again, one of the recent sources that I encountered was um, this documentary by a YouTube user named Jean Benet Ramsey. His book is called Little Girl Blue, B L U with no E, and this is um, by an author named Sweetie B. I'm guessing that's a pseudonym, but what do you have to say about anything I put forward? Drop a comment below and let's discuss.